All right, so you just got your turntable, you took it home and unboxed it. Now what? Well, the first thing you should do is place it on a sturdy, flat and level surface. Placing the table in this type of area is key to playing your records properly. But for filming purposes, I'll be placing my turntable on the floor. Now we need to take a look at the different parts and understand why we need them. I'll be demonstrating on the Audio-Technica LP120, but no matter what turntable you have, the parts should essentially be the same. First, we have the dust cover. These are usually included with your turntable and they protect the entire thing from dust. So let's remove that so we can take a look at all the other parts. Next, we have the plinth. This is the main body or base of the turntable. The plinth holds all the other parts together. Next, we have the platter which is the part of the turntable that spins and supports the record as it's being played. Next, we have the motor. The motor is connected to the platter and allows it to spin. Now, being that this is a direct drive turntable, the motor is hidden below and directly connected to the platter. In a belt drive turntable, the motor is placed on one side and spins the platter using a rubber belt, hence the term belt drive. I'll be talking more about those motors in future videos. Next, we have the record mat. The mat sits between the platter and the record. It reduces vibration caused by the motor and prevents the metal platter from scratching the underside of your record. The mat can also affect the sound quality of your record, but we'll get to that later. Next, we have the spindle. Simply, this is the center post that holds the record on the platter. Now let's move to the stylus. The stylus, also called the needle, tracks the grooves on your record. There are different styluses, or styli, for different record grooves, but if you're going to be playing the standard 12-inch LP records or 7-inch singles, a normal micro-groove stylus will work just fine. This is the most common type of needle. Next, let's talk about the cartridge. The cartridge holds the stylus and converts its movements into an electrical signal. It's basically the little box connected to the needle. The head shell is another important part. It connects to the cartridge in two ways, using screws on top and four lead wires on bottom. These wires are color-coded in white, red, blue, and green. These wires will be important later. Now, the tone arm will hold the entire assembly of stylus, cartridge, and head shell. The arm also moves along with the stylus, allowing it to ride in the grooves of the record. Essentially, the tone arm carries the electrical signal from the cartridge to your turntable. At the opposite end of the tone arm is the counterweight. The counterweight balances the tone arm, but most importantly, it controls the tracking force. This tracking force is basically the weight of the needle pressing down, whether heavy or light. And if it's too heavy, it's gonna carve up the record grooves and destroy both the record and the needle. But if it's too light, it'll skip across the grooves and scratch your records. We'll talk more about tracking force later. The next part of the turntable is the anti-skate. What does this do? Well, as its name implies, it prevents the needle from jumping the groove and skating across the record as it's playing. And as I just mentioned, this would scratch your records badly. The anti-skate is basically a counter force that prevents the tone arm from being pulled too quickly to the middle of the record. For now, just set this to zero. Next up is the height adjust. The height adjust sits at the base of the tone arm. As its name implies, it controls the height of the tone arm. This is important because if the arm is too low, the needle will not sit properly in the groove. If it's too high, same problem. But when the tone arm is completely parallel to the record, the needle will sit in the groove perfectly and produce accurate sound. Now let's move on to the cueing device. The cueing device is located next to the height adjust, and this little tool lowers and lifts the needle from the record. But you may be thinking, why do I need this stupid thing if I can just drop the needle on the record with my hand? Well, the cueing device prevents lateral or side-to-side -side movement, which can scratch your record. And unfortunately, our hands are just not that accurate, so it's better to use this device every time you play your records. Next, let's move to the start button. This button is pretty straightforward. It starts and stops the motor, which spins both the platter and the record. Next to the start button is the speed selector. These buttons change the speed of the motor between 33, 45, 
or if you press them both at the same time, 78 RPM. RPM meaning revolutions per minute. This is nice for when you're playing different kinds of records. Next is the pitch control. This little slider varies the speed of the motor, allowing you to raise or lower the pitch. This is mostly a DJ feature. At the top of the turntable, we have the seven inch adapter. This adapter allows you to play 45 singles, which have a larger center hole. And finally, we have the cables. The first of which is the audio cable. This is an analog RCA cable extending from the back of the turntable. It has two connections, left channel, which is white, and the right channel, which is red. And the final part of your turntable is the power cable. This is your standard AC cable that plugs into an outlet and powers the entire thing. All right, so now that we know all the parts of the turntable, the first thing we need to do is attach the cartridge to the head shell and then connect that assembly to the tone arm. Now, if your turntable already came with the cartridge attached to the head shell, then you can skip ahead to this part of the video. Okay, now let's take a look at what the finished assembly will look like. First, we have the head shell, which is this entire gray part at the top. Next, we have the finger lift, which is the part that we grab to move the needle where we want it to go. Next, we have the top screws. These two screws sit on each side of the cartridge and connect it to the head shell above. Speaking of the cartridge, here it is. The cartridge is this entire black part with a shiny silver finish on the underside. Next, we have the stylus, also called the needle. This tiny part rides in the record grooves. Next, we have the nut. There are two of these, one on each side. They attach to the bottom of the top screws and keep the cartridge held firmly in place. Next, we have the lead wires. These small wires connect the electrical components of the cartridge to the head shell. These wires are important because they carry the electrical signal from the record to your turntable. The four wires are color coded and we'll get back to that in a second. And finally, we have the end of the head shell which connects to your turntable. So this is the final assembly. Feel free to pause this video if you wanna become familiar with all of the parts before we move on. Now, the first thing we need to do is attach the cartridge to the head shell using the top screws. Line up the cartridge holes with the head shell holes above, then place the two top screws into the slots on the top of the head shell. Now that the screws are joining the two pieces together, place the nuts onto each screw from the bottom. You can twist the nuts in place using your fingers and then use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the top screws from above. You wanna line up everything so that the top screws are in the center of the head shell holes. We'll adjust them later, but for now, place them in the center. Okay, now that that's done, we can get back to the four lead wires I talked about. These wires are usually connected to the head shell when you buy it. Now here is a simple diagram of the head shell and cartridge connections. First, we have the head shell connections. In this demonstration, I'm using the Audio-Technica Universal head shell. The connected wires are white, red, blue, and green. The placement of these wires is usually the same with every head shell. Next, we have the cartridge connections. I'm using the Audio-Technica AT95E cartridge, and here are the connections that correspond to the wires, white, red, blue, and green. The placement of these connections could be different for you if you're using a different cartridge. So be sure to check your cartridge manual or go online to find out. Okay, now that we know where everything is, all we have to do is connect white to white, red to red, blue to blue, and green to green. I'll talk about how you can do this in a second, but for now, here's some important info about these four wires and what they mean. White means left channel, red means right channel, blue means left ground, and green means right ground. Feel free to pause this if you need to. Okay, now you may be wondering, how do I connect these wires to the cartridge? They're really tiny, they're really small. Well, the simple solution is to use a pair of household tweezers. These are really the perfect size for working with the lead wires, but be careful not to damage the fragile wires themselves. Only hold the wires by the metal ends when you're pushing them into place. Now, it might take time to connect them, but I promise a little patience will pay off big time. Once you've connected the cartridge to the head shell using the top screws and the lead 
wires, all you have left to do is to connect the entire assembly to the tone arm. This can be done by placing the end of the assembly on the tone arm and then twisting the neck to lock it in place. Now that we've set up the cartridge and head shell assembly and connected that to the tone arm, the next thing we need to do is balance the tone arm, also known as resetting the tone arm. Now before we begin, make sure that the anti-skate is set to zero. We don't want that affecting the tone arm just yet. Also, make sure that the cueing device is in the raised position. Once that's done, we can begin. First, place the arm over the platter. Now, I want you to lower the cueing device and see how the arm behaves. If the tone arm tilts forward, like that, then the arm is front heavy. But if it tilts backward, like that, then the arm is back heavy. So what we want essentially is to have the arm perfectly balanced between these two extremes so that it gently floats above the platter under its own weight. Kind of like this, where it's perfectly level to the platter. To do this, all we have to do is adjust the counterweight at the end of the arm. If we rotate the weight counterclockwise, we'll increase the weight at the front. If we rotate it clockwise, we'll decrease the weight at the front. Now, I want you to raise the cueing device then adjust the counterweight in whichever direction you need, and then, to test the new balance, lower the cueing device once again. Did the weight become a little more balanced? If it did, keep repeating this process until you have the arm floating above the platter in a level position. Now, it might take a while to get it just right, but you'll know it when it's balanced perfectly. Now that your arm is balanced, lift the cueing device one more time. Now, without affecting the counterweight, rotate its front plastic ring and set it to zero. You have now officially balanced your tone arm. Now that we've balanced the tone arm, we need to adjust the tracking force. This is basically the weight of the needle pressing down, whether heavy or light. If it's too heavy, it might carve up the grooves and destroy both the record and the needle. But if it's too light, it's gonna skip across the grooves and scratch your records, and you don't want that either. Now, this weight is measured in grams, and in order to get it just right, all you have to do is consult your cartridge manual or go online to find out the recommended tracking force for your specific cartridge. You can do a quick Google search to find this out. Every cartridge is different, so you need to do a little research. In this demonstration, I'm using the Audio-Technica AT95E cartridge, and its recommended tracking force is two grams. So now, what you have to do is rotate the counterweight until the front plastic ring is set to two grams. But wait, you're not finished yet. The next thing you have to do is check to see if the cartridge is actually tracking at two grams. So you'll need either a stylus force gauge, like this one from Shure, or a digital gram scale. Either one will work, but personally, I prefer the gram scale because it's way more accurate. They're also only about 15 to 20 bucks on Amazon, which is a really good price. You can use these devices to measure the tracking force by placing the device on the platter and then lowering the stylus on top. You can then adjust the counterweight slightly to give you the perfect two gram reading. This might take a second, but just keep checking until you've got it right. When you've got the weight at the proper tracking force, return the tone arm back to its original position. You have now set the tracking force. Good job. Now that we've set the tracking force, we need to adjust the anti-skate. Why is this important? Well, the anti-skate prevents the needle from jumping the groove and skating across the record as it's playing. And you don't want that because it would scratch your records badly. The anti-skate basically acts like a counter force that prevents the tone arm from being pulled too quickly to the middle of the record. Now, I'd be lying to you if I told you this wasn't the easiest part of the entire setup process. All you have to do is rotate the anti-skate ring clockwise to match the tracking force number. And being that our tracking force is two grams, the anti-skate will be set to two. Wasn't that simple? I told you it was gonna be super easy. Now that we've set the anti-skate, we need to height adjust the tone arm. But first, why is it important to adjust the height? Well, here is a diagram of three different tone arm heights, and these pink lines will represent the vinyl records resting below them. Now, the top arm is wrong because its height is too low, causing the needle to tilt backwards. And the bottom arm is wrong because its height is too high, causing the needle to tilt downwards. 
But the middle arm is perfect because it's completely parallel with the record below and its needle is perfectly level. Now, all that being said, if your tone arm height is already parallel to your record, then you don't need to adjust this setting at all. My height adjust is set to zero and that works well for me. But if you're using a different turntable and your arm is too low or too high, you might need to adjust this. All you have to do is rotate this plastic ring counterclockwise to raise the entire arm up. Once you've found a level position, you can lock the height adjustment into place with this little switch. Now your tone arm is at the proper height and we're almost done. Now that we've height adjusted the tone arm, we need to align the cartridge. Now as you remember, we left the top screws in the center of the head shell holes. Now we're going to adjust them. First, I want you to slightly loosen the top screws with the small screwdriver. This will free up the cartridge just a little bit, allowing us to make fine adjustments. Don't loosen the screws too much, just a little bit will work. Now we need to align the cartridge so that the needle will sit in the groove perfectly and give us the best sound. But how do we align it properly? Well, we're gonna need an alignment protractor. You can buy a basic one on Amazon for about 13 bucks, but there is a better option and it's free. All you have to do is go to the website vinylengine.com, click on tools on the top right, and then click cartridge alignment protractors at the very top. This page has tons of great protractors depending on your specific needs. All you have to do is click on the one that works well with your turntable. In my case, that's the Stevenson Protractor and it will download a high resolution PDF directly to your computer. But the only thing is that you have to sign up on their website in order to download these files. But signing up is completely free as well and it only took me a few minutes. And I didn't need to enter a credit card information or anything like that, so you're good. These printable alignment tools are absolutely perfect for getting your adjustment 100% spot on. All you have to do is poke a hole where the spindle is gonna go and then place the protractor on top of the platter. Now, make sure the cueing device is in the raised position and move the cartridge directly over the first point on the protractor. Now, lower the cueing device and see where the needle lands. Our target is right right here, in the dead center of all of the lines. If you need to, raise the arm, move it slightly, and then lower it again. Keep adjusting the protractor and the arm until you are able to hit the center point with your needle. Okay, now that we've touched down directly on the center point, look at the sides of the cartridge. Are they parallel with the lines on the protractor, or are they a little off? What you want to do is pivot the cartridge until its sides line up with the lines on the protractor. Once the sides of your cartridge are completely parallel to the lines on the protractor, and the needle is resting on the center point, then you're perfect. Now retighten the top screws to lock that adjustment into place. Now here is the real test. Raise the arm and move the cartridge from the first point to the second point on the protractor and then lower the arm. Once the needle is on the center point, do the sides of the cartridge still line up? If they do, you're perfect. But if they don't, you're gonna have to go back to the first point and readjust the cartridge. Now, I know this process can be tiring, but you need to keep making fine adjustments until you can hit both points spot on and the sides are perfectly parallel to the lines. I believe in you, you can do this. If you are able to hit both points with the sides being completely parallel to the lines, then tighten the top screws and you are all set. Set, my friend. You have now officially aligned your cartridge. Pat yourself on the back, you earned it. So now that we've aligned the cartridge, we can talk about your record mat options. There are four main types of record mats. First, we have felt, which is by far the most common, and it's usually the mat that's included when you buy a new turntable. Next, we have rubber, which used to be popular, but is now becoming harder and harder to find. Next, we have cork, which has been increasingly popular the last few years, and finally, we have leather, which is also becoming more popular. Now, if you want, you can just slap the standard felt mat on top of the platter and be good to go. But like I said earlier, each mat can affect the sound quality of your records differently. So if you consider yourself a true audiophile, you might wanna tweak the sound to be of a little higher quality. That would involve swapping the standard felt mat with something a little more fun. Now, I had heard good things about the cork mats. However, the one that I ultimately decided on was the deer hide leather mat. So that's the one we're gonna talk about today. I got this on Amazon for about 35 bucks and after having it for a year, I can honestly tell tell you that it does make a huge difference. The mat has two sides, a leather side right here 
and a very soft suede side. I found that by placing it suede side up, the base was a lot punchier and defined. So ultimately, like I said, a simple matte can mean the difference between a muddy sound or a crystal clear and sharp sound. Now that we've talked about your record matte options, let's move on to the turntable's dust cover. Common sense tells us that the dust cover has absolutely no impact on the sound quality whatsoever, so don't worry about that at all. Honestly, other than keeping dust off your turntable, this cover doesn't really do anything else. Some people choose to keep it on while others leave it off entirely. In fact, some of the really high-end turntables out there don't even even come with dust covers, which I think is kind of funny. I mean, you're paying thousands upon thousands of dollars for a turntable and you don't even get a dust cover? Anyways, the reason some people choose to leave the dust cover off is because it's much easier to switch out records if you don't have to lift the cover every time you do so. Ultimately, this is really a matter of personal choice, so it's really up to you as to what you want to do. Now, I personally choose to leave it on because I don't want dust to build up on the surface of my turntable. But if you find it more convenient to leave it off, then that's okay too. Just know that you're probably going to have to clean the turntable surface more often. Now that we're done with everything, the final step is to connect our turntable to the rest of our setup. But before we do that, we have to understand the vinyl audio setup. Now, I made another video about this if you'd like to know how everything works in detail, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna give you the simple version. The basic vinyl audio setup has four important parts. First, we have the turntable, of course. Next, we have the preamplifier, or preamp for short. Third, we have the amplifier. And finally, we have the speakers. Now, it's very important to understand this basic setup before we continue. Turntable, preamp, amplifier, and speakers. Turntable, preamp, amplifier, and speakers. Just keep saying that over and over, okay? Do you have it? All right. Let's go. Now, some turntables have the preamp built into them, but others don't. So it's very important to identify which type of turntable you have. If it has the preamp built in, then you won't need to buy one and your setup will be a little easier. Now, just like there are two different types of turntables, there are also two different types of speakers. Some speakers have the amplifier built into them, but others don't. So yet again, it's very important to identify which type of speakers you have. And there's actually a very simple way to do this. If you see the words active speakers anywhere, then those speakers have the amplifier built in. But if you see the words passive speakers written anywhere, then those speakers do not have the amplifier built in. So if you go with the active speakers, you won't need to buy an amplifier. And yet again, your setup will be a little easier. Now with everything we've just learned, let's review all the possible audio setups. First, the basic setup, turntable, preamp, amplifier, and speakers. Next, we got the easy setup, turntable with the built-in preamp, amplifier, and passive speakers. And finally, the easiest setup, turntable with a built-in preamp and active speakers with a built-in amplifier. Now you could say, but Jared, what about the all-in-one turntables that have the turntable, the preamp, amplifier, and speakers all built into one? Are those any good? No, they're not. Those are usually not the best systems because they're basically sacrificing quality for convenience. So I would not recommend you ever buy one of those ever. Like I said before, if you want to get the most out of your vinyl audio setup, you should buy the parts separately. Now, the very last thing you have to do is plug your turntable's audio cable into your next audio component, whether that's the preamp, the amplifier, or the speakers. You can do this by placing the white connection into the left channel and the red connection into the right channel. Then plug the AC power cord into the nearest electrical outlet and you are completely done. Congratulations on watching all these videos. Enjoy your new turntable and all of the great music that comes with it. And if you enjoyed this series, you should join Join the Vinylized community, give this video a thumbs up, and hit subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with a lot of great videos every Thursday and Saturday that you're not going to want to miss. Be sure to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. All the links are in the description below. And most importantly, friends, keep spinning that vinyl.